Good afternoon, friends. You are listening to Full Toss on Radio Dil online, radiodil.com for iPhone downloads. Application known as uh, Radio Dil. You can also listen to us on your regular phones. Dial in the number 408-418-5000. Once again, that is 408-418-5000 for Android phones. Application known as Tune Radio. Phone number in the studio, 732-800-1008. 732-800-1008. Aap sun rahe Radio Dil. Dil se, dil tak. Time in the studio is 207, September 22nd, second day of fall 2012. This is your host, Amit. Would like to welcome all the listeners and above all, Amanat, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you very much, Amit. It's a beautiful, wonderful day in New Jersey. Fall is officially on and cricket is in the air, especially in the World Cup at Sri Lanka. <clears throat> yes, indeed, sir. And we have plenty to cover on that uh, front, Amanat. Also, Uh, some exciting matches are happening here locally as well. Uh, New Jersey cricket is catching fire. Uh, yes, thanks uh, for mentioning. Uh, you're that. having playoffs, finals, semi-finals. I'm sure all the New Jersey cricket fans are uh, extremely excited. Very, very, very well contested matches uh, that, that are going on locally right here in our backyard, Amanat. So we'll definitely cover some of the matches here. I know we have uh, a Millennium Cricket Club will be co- will be covering their matches. Uh, the Millennium League, you mean? Mil- Millennium League, yes. Mm. Thank you for correcting me on that one. Also, the Cricket League of New Jersey, that is CLNJ, NJS, BCL, that stands for New Jersey Softball Cricket League. Mm. And I believe uh, uh, we'll also try to see if we can uh, give some coverage to our uh, friend Deepak Kate. Yes. Of the New Jersey. the empires and cricket association yes and they are also conducting matches yes, and indeed. they deserve to be covered i know i had recent i recently had a phone call from uh, our friends at njs bcl they are having a, their finals on october the 6th oh, that should be interesting now we all we have always talked about this league they play with the softball amanat mm-hmm. and a bunch of exciting cricketers mm-hmm. and we'll go over their points table table as well and uh, in the meantime what we'll do amanat today the, the way i have the game plan set up is we'll juggle back and forth between the international cricket as well as the domestic cricket. Okay. And uh, in between, we also have our This Day in Cricket segment. That's the segment that when we cover the milestones, we cover the birthdays and the obituaries. Okay. Um, I also have some did you knows. So All right. We'll, we'll throw that in the mix as we go along. Amanath, let's get right into it. ICC World Cup T20. Yes. Now, before, before I, before... we get into any other any other discussions here are the, here are the two matches that took place today mm. uh, uh, rain affected matches mm. both of them australia came out winner as you know, from the one of one of them they yes. defeated west indies uh, that is the most recent match the most recent match they defeated west indies uh, through the dl method here's a quick look at the scorecard for australia and west indies so once again friends this was uh, this was a rain affected match but i thought west indies batted really well amanath And no, no, was, no question about that. That It, was a, that was a pretty, pretty, pretty interesting total, and especially given this venue, Amanath, for a first innings total, I'm going to get to that with you. Uh, I, I know, I know, we have discussed in length about the, the Premadasa Stadium in Colombo, but here's how the scorecard looked: West Indies batting first scored a whopping 191 in 20 overs. Yes, and everybody contributed. And, uh, and they chose to bat. They chose to bat. Yes, yes, yes they, they chose, chose to. That was I thought. Was a pretty interesting decision, Amanat. Mm. Uh, but here, here's how the scorecard looks. Uh, Smith was bowled by Stark at the score of two. Chris Gale, 54 of 33 deliveries, five boundaries, and four sixes. Yes, a typical Gale innings. Typical Gale innings. Charles, uh, 16, 54. Samuels. He's he's been having a pretty good stint. Marlon Samuels has become a yes, very mature batsman. Yes, indeed. Again, he also had four sixes and three boundaries. Fifteen, thirty-two balls. Thirty-two deliveries. Twenty-seven for uh, Bravo, and this is Dwayne Bravo. Yes. Not that Darren Bravo. Dwayne Bravo. Twenty-seven, ten for uh, uh, Karen Pollard. Twelve for uh, Sammy. Darren yeah. Sammy. He's in a seven captain. balls. In seven <laughs> deliveries, helped. West Indies get to a total of 191. Now, at that particular point, Amanath, 191, uh, 192 for the Australians to chase. I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good total. I, I think it was a, uh, the West Indies batsmen raised their hands and delivered yes. against a powerful uh, Australian attack. By the way, they they, ha- they they have been listed at the as favourites. Yes, I think the and they they lived up to that billing in yes, terms of yes, their batting. Indeed, indeed, 192 is what Australia were Needed. asked to chase. Here's how the batting started for Australia. David Warner was caught by Dinesh Ramdin, and he was bowled by Edwards at 28, uh, 41 for the dangerous Shane Watson, Amanath. Yes, he scored that in 24 deliveries, two uh, boundaries, and three sixes, and uh, giving him company was uh, Michael Hussey, 28 in 19 deliveries, three boundaries, and a six. In 9.1 overs, they scored. Uh, 
you know, a pretty, pretty good, pretty good 100, 100 runs. Around. That, that's, that's an outstanding uh, run chase they have with 10.9 runs per over. Now, uh, through the DL method, now, um, before, the, before we walked into the studio, you mentioned something yes. that because of the par score, Australia were awarded the win. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk about that. See, uh, the D- Duckworth Lewis method uh, essentially evaluates what is the par, par score after every delivery is b- bold. Um, the number of uh, available balls comes down. The uh, run to be scored also come, may come down. And also, uh, uh, how many wickets have fallen, that may also uh, be reduced. So taking these three factors, the Duckworth Lewis essentially tells, this should be the par score if you are keeping uh, uh, the chase correctly. A good healthy run rate. You are having a healthy run rate. And uh, as per the Duckworth Lewis, they needed at the end of nine overs to have scored only 83 runs. Uh, as per the Duckworth Lewis. And Oshley was well ahead. And by my... A run chase index as well. Yes, that's what I was going to get again. Uh, I, now, I've, I've done the run, run chase index. Let uh, me let me just paint the picture for for you and our listeners. The target at that point was eighty four runs in nine point one over Samanath. Yes, for uh, Australians nine, to chase nine point five overs. Nine point. Uh, yeah, only one ball was. Uh, ten, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Uh, ten, so 10. now, 5. if you were, I I know you don't do fundamental analysis for unaffected matches, mm. but if this match were to continue, mm. what? Should I, what would have been your analysis? Okay. As of now, as of currently, you know, Australia were awarded this win. Mm. At this point, at this juncture, mm. according to you, how was the chase? Okay. As per my uh, model of chasing. That is the run chase index. A run chase index. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, Australia had an 80% chance of winning. Wonderful. 80%. They had the resources definitely available. Uh, uh, they, had 80%. They, were, they, had, they were ahead of the, I guess, the eight ball, curveball, what's, uh, what's your uh, term uh, that you uh, use? Uh, ahead of the eight ball. Uh, they were ahead of the um, uh, run chase, uh, 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 the resource index. They were, uh, they were ahead of the resource clock. To be, the resource clock, okay. They were ahead of the resource clock, well ahead, not just ordinarily ahead. If they were even, I would say there, it would have been a 50% chance. They were so well ahead, they had an 80% chance of making the target. So th- they, they were winning the game hands down. At, uh, if it continued in the same manner, unless they had a horrible batting collapse, there is no reason why Australia won't have won. Well, here's- and if I uh, go by, the, say, at the end of the seventh over, if you look at the end of the seventh over, Australia were 69 for one. At 69 for one, and the end of seven overs, only one wicket lost, and to score 192 to win, the run chase index they were uh, they were well ahead of the resource clock, and the run chase index uh, indicated a probability of 77 percent. That's pretty outstanding. As they were at the end of seven overs, and at the end of nine overs, they were they improved it to 80 80 percent chance. So they were well ahead. Uh, no, no question about that, and they were, they never Australia never trailed at any point of time. They were not behind the resource clock at any point of time. Now, just a quick reminder, friends: uh, Australians were uh, rated below Ireland before the World Cup t- started in T20s. Well, that, that, that was unfair because you have to remember they were uh, finalists in the last World Cup. I don't know how the ICC makes those rankings, and uh, I, I have very serious questions about their methodology because. Australia were finalists. They lost to um, England in the uh, 2010 World Cup. Yes, 11. It was the World Cup. Oh, sorry, the World Cup, yes, the, the 10 T20, World. T20 right. World Cup. Now, Amanat, uh, that was our scorecard. Now, before I, before I leave T20 World Cup, here's something I wanted to share with you and our listeners as well. Okay. Number one, the timing of the World Cup. That's number one. But before we get into the timing, I, I mean the, the weather-wise and monsoon and everything else, my biggest uh, grudge... Gripe? Against yes, your biggest gripe. <laughs> you can say that also. It's the telecast. A lot of people are being deprived. Mm. Not only now our neighborhood, Amanad, other other places across this country and over the world. ESPN three has gotten the the nod ahead of anybody else in broadcasting. They had the broadcasting rights. In our area, people who have cable vision have absolutely no chances of viewing the matches at all. That's a uh, really a very sad story. I've heard this from countless number of other cricket fans. They came to me yesterday and they're saying, where are you watching? Yeah. Luckily, I have Comcast, which covers uh, ESPN3. Now, again, I'm just I'm only mentioning ca- cable vision. I'm, I'm, and there are plenty more providers out there who are not able to provide the, these matches to ESPN. Now, I know they, uh, this is something, I mean, this is, this is one of the, you know, it's, it's World Cup you're talking about. Uh. 
Exactly. And uh, from, from a business perspective also, I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway, uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm most uh, agitated about is as, as a cricket fan, as a cricket lover, I'm being deprived of watching you know, a, a match like a World Cup. It's a T20 World Cup. A T20 World Cup, uh, if the fans cannot watch it, you are forcing people to use illegal means. That's exactly what I was coming to. Amanat. No, no. Uh, see, we don't want to promote uh, illegal uh, uh, pirating of any uh, sporting event. Or piracy anyway. I mean, anyway. this is something, I mean... Uh, but this is just ridiculous that uh, cricket fans in USA who are a growing lot it's a big market. More than 2 million uh, immigrants follow cricket, uh, if not more. And they, uh, they're being deprived of watching quality, highest quality cricket uh, of the T20 World Cup. I have no words further to add. Well, thank you very much, Amanath. And I would also like to hear from our listeners as well, Amanath. Yes. And, you know, uh, the listeners on, on this show listen to us from all over the country. Uh, give us a call here at 732-800-1008, 732-800-1008. And let us know. If you are able to watch these matches or not. Amanath, well, let's get right into our uh, domestic front now. Okay, go ahead. We'll, I'll come back and we'll discuss South Africa and uh, Sri Lanka l- later, later on the show. I, I really wanted to cover this, uh, some of the matches here that, that are played locally. And uh, uh, let me get right into the Millennium Cricket League, Amanath. Okay. They had, they had some pretty, pretty interesting matches. Some of the finals took place between Division A and Division B matches. Mm-hmm. Now, the first one we'll cover is uh, between the Rebels and the ECT. And East Coast Titans. Yes, East Coast Titans. Thank mm. you for uh, uh, elaborating on that. Mm. No, uh, this is this is uh, once again uh, um, you're talking about the championship for Division A Rebels versus ECT. That is East Coast Titans, and uh, Rebels in the first inning scored a whopping 220 runs. Amanath. That's a very impressive score. And especially for finals. Mm. I thought that was a pretty impressive score, Amanath. I think they batted really well. Look at, look at the top order. 43 for Eugene Hudson. Rohan, uh, Rohan Shait scored a good half century. Scored 51 in 62 deliveries with four boundaries and two sixes. Kunal Baride scored uh, 15, 22 for Deepak Anchan. 40 for uh, Jermaine Lawson. 20, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> 20 for Harshal Patel. 12 for Santosh Dani. Helped. Rebels get to a total of 220. ECT, East Coast Titans have a 221 in 40 overs to chase. Now, before I get into that, here's a quick look at this, uh, the bowling card. Rahil Khan took, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Adnan Naseem took two wickets in, uh, for 29. One wicket for uh, Sarosh Nadeem. Uh, you know, he's, he's eight. Go ahead. If, uh, Santosh Nadim got one wicket and also in, in Irfan Nasim took one wicket. Irfan Nasim took a wicket, uh, he gave up 41 runs in eight overs. Now, 222 runs that was needed, that was a, that was a target for ECT. This is how their inning started. Farooq Ali, along with uh, Asan Irshad, Irshad opened up the innings for ECT. 13 for Ali, Irshad 23, 4 for Farhan Ali. Uh, Sarosh Nadim was uh, out on a duck. Abdul Rahim, 13, 9 for Adnan Naseem. Saeed Ahmed, 24. There was some resistance in the, in the, down the order, Amanath. Down the order, yes. Down the order, but I think it was a little too late. On, they, they couldn't keep it going. They couldn't keep it going. And 28 for Irfan Naseem and uh, Saeed Ahmed, 24, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, they bundled out uh, 151. A uh, very convincing victory for, very convincing victory, for the Rebels. Now, congratulations uh, for the Rebels. They won this match, uh, ECT. They, in fact, Rebels have become the MCL Division A champions. Division 1 champions. And uh, Jermaine Lawson. He has, uh, yes. He, uh, he took four wickets as well. Correct. Uh, Correct. Uh, so he had a very uh, good all-round performance and deservedly took the man of the match. Now, here's the second match that took place. Uh, this was the Division B match, Amanath. Okay. And let me just go ahead and read the scorecard for our listeners. This is uh, the Millennium Cricket League Division uh, Division B and the uh, Indians uh, are uh, the MCL Division B champions. Warriors are the runners-up. Now, here are the, here are the Warriors. The uh, Warriors elected to bat, Amanat. They won the toss. Mm-hmm. They elected to bat. And in 40 overs, they managed to get 128 with 3.76 runs per over. I thought, um, um, I mean, the Indians did a pretty superb job in containing mm-hmm. Warriors to this particular score, Amanat. In 30, 30 34 overs, uh, the Warriors were bowled out. Uh, not a good start for uh, Warriors. Rajesh Mehta was uh, uh, out at the score of zero. Nikhil Jatani, 23-19 for Anvit. 
Tarpasia, Ranveer Singh 14, Viraj Desai 13, 25 for British Patel. By the way, we have witnessed their match against the Edison. Edison Cricket Club. Yes, yes. And we know what they can do. In fact, especially towards down the down the order, they do have some pretty good solid batting lineup. But mm-hmm. in in this particular instance, uh, they folded out for 120 in Amanath. I thought superb job by the by the Indians. They did a pretty wonderful job in in containing them. Here's a bowling card for uh, for the Indians. Uh, Abhishek Dalal, 21 runs. He gave up uh, taking a wicket. A wicket for Dipen Desai. He gave up 29 runs in uh, six overs. Vishal Patel, two wickets for 20 in six overs. Four wickets for Arun Sharma. He gave up 18 runs in eight overs and two wickets for uh, uh, Ritiraj. Ritik Raj, is that? Uh, Kartik, Kartik Raj. Raj. Kartik Raj Sriram in 8 overs, 37 runs and 2 wickets. 128 is what the Indians uh, had a, a target in 40 overs, Samanath. And this is how they started. Uh, uh, Sriram was out on 15. 72 for Chintan Modi, Amanath, not out. That is a very good innings. In 73 deliveries, uh, four boundary, 8 boundaries involved in this one. Bhargav Patel, 25 in only 17 deliveries, he had four boundaries in this one, Amanath. Mm. And uh, so there was a pretty good performances by the uh, by these players. They chased uh, this total pretty comfortably. Very comfortable. Just 23 comfortable. overs they scored. Absolutely correct. Amanath, so these are some of the scores we have for the Millennium Cricket League. And uh, So congratulations once again. Absolutely. Now, once again, just a quick reminder for our listeners. Uh, Rebels are the 2012 Millennium Cricket League Division A champions. And the Indians are 2012 Millennium Cricket League Division B champions. And obviously runners-up runners up, uh, for Division A are ECT and Warriors are for the Division B. Amanath, uh, we'll continue covering our matches locally here. Mm. Now let me jump right back into the international arena. Okay. Friends, you are listening to Full Toss. This is your host Amit along with Amanath on Radio Dil, online RadioDil.com. We're also on YouTube. On a YouTube channel, Full Toss Cricket. We're also on Twitter with the tagline Full Toss Cricket. And those of you who follow our blog, our blog is fulltosscricket.com. Phone number in the studio is 732-800-1008. Let's get right into ISIS World Cup T20 played in Sri Lanka, Manad. And here's the second match that took place this morning between South Africa and the hosts in Sri Lanka. Here's a quick look at the scorecard. Now, Manad, this is, I really want to talk to you about this match. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let me just share the scorecard with our listeners and let, let them be the judge of this thing and then we'll get into it. Now, this was a seven-hour match. How can you have a seven-hour match? Well, they did. <laughs> South African scored 78 for loss of four wickets in seven overs. And uh, Sri Lankans uh, they scored 46 for loss of five wickets uh, in seven overs. South Africans, they won this uh, by 32 runs. Seven overs, you, you can actually play. Why, why couldn't they schedule this match for a different day? Such a, such a good match. Both good teams are playing Amanath. I think uh, they should bring a rule. If you're going to have a, a tournament in Sri Lanka, they better have a closed indoor stadium. <laughs> That's the only way matches are going to get finished. You, you're, you're organizing a, a World Cup match in the middle of monsoon season. Uh, I, I can't understand. What kind the of planning? Depriving fans of watching the matches anyway. What a joke this is. Uh, 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 the whole fun is lost. I can understand one match getting rained out, but you're going to get 40 to 50 percent of the matches getting rained out. I'm almost certain. We were discussing about that earlier. earlier okay, day, this, is, this is ridiculous. But given the fact it's a seven over game, it is very interesting to see Amla. I'm very impressed. Yes, with him. yes, yes. Oh yes. my God. <laughs> Something is uh, horribly right or wrong with him. Amla, look at 16, uh, 16 runs in 14 deliveries. Uh, no, nine, nine, nine deliveries. deliveries three boundaries. Hmm. Duplessis. Now, Amanath, I know before the World Cup started, there were a lot of eyebrows raised on his selection. Yes. Duplessis. He's, he's, not, he's not new to the, this arena, Amanath. He, he plays in the IPL. He plays in the IPL. A.B. De Villiers, 30 in uh, 13 deliveries with one boundary and two sixes. Dumini very well deserved. He, he got a nod for the World Cup also. Uh, 12 in five deliveries, one boundary and a six. And I, I Abhi think that's, that's what turned the tables. De Villiers and Dumini scoring phenomenally. They, they scored 43 runs in just 24 balls. Now, Sri Lankans didn't have a pretty good start, Avanath. Jayavadhan out on four, Dilshan out on zero. And and, uh, they, they just threw their wickets away. They threw their wickets away. But I, totally I have to tell, that. again, trying to hit Stein is almost an impossible... Oh, Stein is, is a world-class ball. Oh, my God. The way he... No matter what conditions you throw at him. Uh, he's he's uh, truly the top bowler of the world today. 
I mean, I know we hey, have always hey, discussed. Hey, hey, if I say Amla is the best batsman in cricket today, it is uh, uh, Stein who is the best bowler uh, in cricket, and both happen to be playing for South Africa. Avanat, we've been doing the show for the last so many years. Uh, we're into our uh, this a uh, tenth year now, almost yes. a decade mm. of being on air full toss. I remember when McGrath was still playing back in the days. You know, we always talked about Glenn McGrath. Uh, Glenn McGrath was uh, untouchable. Untouchable, and I know Stein is is not there yet. He's he's pretty good. But he's in the same league, Amanath. Uh, you have to give him a lot of respect. Yes, you, indeed you do. And I think he does get a lot of respect. He does. And again, what I said earlier is no matter what conditions he plays under, you you can always expect the best out of him. And he, he delivers for his captain. Amanath, uh, we'll quickly go ahead and do our This Day in Cricket segment. And when we have, after that, we'll, take a go, we'll go ahead and take a short drinks break when we come back. We still have to discuss some of the league matches here locally. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll circle back. I'll do some of the points table for the T20 World Cup. And uh, a big match between England and India. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, before, before, I, before I get into the uh, this Indian cricket segment, I also wanted to uh, talk about Team Afghanistan. They well, gave, almost gave India a run for their money. Uh, no, they gave a run for money. They almost defeated us. They almost defeated India on this <laughs> they one. They gave a run for the money. No question about that. And there was a point in that match that uh, it looked like that uh, India could not pull that victory off at all. Uh, it has a, a bit of lucky circumstances. They dropped four catches. Yes, That indeed. helped India. And Dhoni managed to hit 10 runs of the last two balls. That gave some amount of respectability to the Indian uh, b uh, batting. And... The, uh, Afghanistan, luckily our spinners struck quite Yuvrat early. Singh, Yuvrat Singh, Yuvi. Yuvi. Oh my God, what a return. Yes, indeed. I'm saving that for the second half, Amanath. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, friends, let's get right into the This Day in Cricket segment. Okay. And this is what happened September 22nd, 1982. 1982? Sri Lanka versus India. Sri Lanka versus India. Dulip Mendes completes twin cricket tons. Uh, 105, he scored, I remember, once. Yes, indeed. Also, uh. September 22nd, 1986. Oh, I know that. That is the tight test in Madras. Yes. Uh. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> but, uh, India versus uh, Australia. I said 86, I know. Madras test. Madras test. Yeah, that it is the second uh, uh, tight test, both involving Australia. Both involving, yes, yes, yes. Thank both you involving Australia. I, I can't, uh, couldn't believe how uh, Mahindra Singh got LBW of the last. Only one more run to win. Exactly. <laughs> uh, come on, score that one run. Now, were you there in India that time? Or no, you no, I was here? following here. <laughs> you were following it here. Yeah. Now, let's get into the birthday seminar. The, sub, born September 22nd, 1902. Oh, no, birthdays. Birthdays. 1902. 1902. Batted uh, in India's first two tests. First two tests. Batted in India. Uh, India's first two tests. Uh, in Indian. Uh, Born 1902. Sorabji uh, Kola. Yeah, uh, S. Kola. C O L A H. Yes, yes, indeed. Ko uh, yes. <laughs> Sorabji Kola. I yes. know. Uh, definitely. He played in the opening test, 1932. That is absolutely correct, sir. Uh. Also born September 22nd, 1958. 1958, so he played in the 80s. Zimbabwean international umpire Charles Coventry. Charles Coventry, no, I, I don't know. Born September 22nd, 1962. 1962, so he played in the 80s. Three tests for Australia, left arm quickie. Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews, he didn't play for too long. Born September 22nd, also 1962, Amanath. Hmm. Mighty New Zealand batsman in 77 tests from 1982 to 1995, Martin Crowe. Okay, Ma Martin Crowe, uh, Jeff Crowe's brother. Correct, <laughs> correct. Crowe's. And also related to the movie star Russell yes, Crowe. Yes, they're, the, they're cousins. And they're all cousins. They're yes. cousins. Jeff Crowe, yes. He's a very, one Martin of the pillars Crow. of... Martin Crowe. Martin Crowe, one of the pillars of uh, New Zealand cricket. Absolutely correct, sir. Also born September 22nd, 1973. Uh, 1973, okay. 1996, Kenyan pace bowler. Kenyan pace bowler must be one of those Odayo or Onyango. 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 Okay. Lamek, Lamek Onyango. I got the first letter right. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. You were pretty close on that one. Lamek Onyango. Lamek Onyango. Okay. Born September 22nd, 1976. 76. Okay. Sri Lankan all-rounder. Century on his first test debut in 2001. Mm-hmm. Tilan Samaravira. Samaravira. Oh, the fellow who got injured in that uh, terrorist attack. In, in Pakistan, yes. Uh, he's indeed. still playing. He's yeah. still playing. He, he does a wonderful he, job. Oh, uh, yes. Tilan Samaravira. Born uh, September. By the way, Samaravira yes. has a, one of the few, uh, again, uh, one of the sh uh, few batsmen who has a test average above 50. Yes, indeed. He has played some 70 odd tests. He's in the league of Jayawardene and uh, Sangakara having an above 50 average. Now, that's for Sri Lankans, but we also talked about Jonathan Trotamanath. Oh, uh, yes. He's got averages in both ODIs as uh, well as. Like Amla. Amla. 
exactly. Amla is on his way too. Born September 22nd, 1978, Bangladeshi test opening batsman Mehrab Hossain. Hossain. I think he played about 10-12 years back. <laughs> Correct. Born September 22nd, 1978. Same, same year, same day. Uh, Irish-English cricketer. Irish English cricketer Ed Joyce Yes he's playing in the 2018 Yes he is he is he is he is playing for Ireland he uh, just uh, two days back I saw Correct. his name EC Joyce EC Joyce Ed <laughs> Joyce <laughs> I don't know but Ed Joyce I remember EC Joyce That's reading right. the scorecards see my, my hobby is to read scorecards <laughs> I can see that <laughs> <laughs> EC Joyce uh, let's get into the obituaries I'm not passed okay. away September 22nd 1880 1880 a little ahead of my time he played one test for versus Australia GF Grace G F Grace must be uh, W G Grace's yes, uh, yes, family. Yes, indeed, they're the yes. uh, part of the family. Uh, George Grace mm. also passed away September twenty second, nineteen fifty three. Okay, he played three tests for South Africa. William Brown. William Brown doesn't ring a bell. Passed away September twenty second, nineteen sixty three. Is a cricketer, South Africa all rounder in only one test. Yeah, Fred Leroux. Fred Leroux. R O U X. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's uh, I've L-E-R-O-U-X. come. L E R O U X. L E R O U X. Well, uh, friends, that was our this day in cricket segment, and uh, uh, friends, you are listening to Full Toss. This is your host Amit, along with Amanat on Radio Dil online, Radio Dil dot com. Uh, you can also listen to us on your regular phones. Dial in the number four zero eight four one eight five thousand. And uh, phone number in the studio seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight. Option number Radio Dil Dil se. Dil tak, and we have a couple of shout outs, Amanat. Okay, uh, I'd like to give a shout out for Shiva in Wayne. He's uh, been a regular listener. We would like to thank him for all his support. Well, Shiva from Wayne, New Jersey, thank you so much for being a, a supporter of Full Toss. You're only encouraging us to bring out more and more uh, cricket news for you. And you know, uh, definitely visit our blog, fulltosscricket. dot com. You can also visit uh, us uh, on YouTube on our YouTube channel. Which is a full toss cricket show. So thank you very much, Shiva, from the full toss uh, crew here. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Abhi Divakar. Abhi Divakar. He plays for the Woodlot Cricket Club. Very nice. Millennium. I think they they are part of the Millennium League. And he's he's also he happens to be my neighbor. Okay. And uh, so good luck to him. There is a passionate cricketer himself. Yes. So uh, a big shout out to him. Uh, shout out to Abhi as well from full toss crew here. Well, friends, stay tuned. We'll be right back after these short messages from our sponsors. And when we do come back, yes, we still have to discuss uh, some other. Te- what what we'll do, Amanath, we'll discuss. We'll get into the points table and the future fixtures, future matches, uh, and also the other leagues. Other leagues as well. We still have Jersey. to cover uh, CLNJ and NJSBCL and NJCUA. Yes, well. indeed. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these short messages from our sponsors. Welcome back, friends. As promised, it was indeed a pretty short drinks break. Uh, friends, you are listening to Full Toss. This is your host Amit, along with Amanat, on Radio Dil online, Radio Dil dot com for iPhone downloads application known as Radio Dil. You can also listen to us on your regular phones. Dial in the number four zero eight four one eight five thousand for Android phones application known as Tune Radio. Phone in the studio seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight. Aap sun rahe Radio Dil Dil se. Dil tak time in the studio is two thirty eight. Would like to welcome back our listeners for the second half. Amanat, welcome back. Thank you very much, Amit. Uh, so we had a pretty uh, interesting first half, Amanat. It was a pretty quick one, also. I felt I felt like it was. Uh, yeah, time flew by. Time flew by on this one, uh, and hey, well, uh, it's the age of T twenty. Yes, indeed. Mm. Yes, indeed, and also some of the exciting matches that are happening locally as well. Yes, I think it just makes uh, us talk uh, about it a little bit more enthusiastically. Amanat, uh, before uh, let's before we get into anything else, now I know in the second half uh, what I intend on covering, time permitting, all these things. Uh, we'll co- I'll get into the points table for the T Twenty World Cup. We also have to talk about. Uh, we'll preview India and England match that will be played. Uh, we also have to cover some of the domestic matches that are being played here uh, locally. Uh, some of the sem- some of the semi-finals and finals uh, t- either taking place or have taken place. Okay. And uh, so we'll give a, a quick coverage on all those uh, matches as well. Now here's a quick look at the uh, the points table, Amanat. And this way we'll also let our listeners know about the groups. Uh, uh, four groups. Four groups. Now this is this this is how the groups are set up for the ICC T20 World Cup. That is being played in Sri Lanka. Group A consists of England, India, and Afghanistan. England have they have played one match. They have won one match against Afghanistan. India also played one match. They won against Afghanistan. Afghanistan has lost both the matches. Group B 
Australia, West Indies and Ireland. Australia has played two matches. They won both of them. They are through. They are through. They are through the, the, the playoffs already. They have made their plays already. Uh, West Indies have, well, we all know that they lost uh, their the first match. And also Ireland lost their first match. They lost to Australia. Correct. And Group C is South Africa, Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe. True. S- South Africans have won both their matches. Uh, Sri Lanka has played two matches. They have won one match and lost one match. And Zimbabwe has lost both the matches. They are out. That was Group C. Group D is New Zealand and Bangladesh. I'm missing one more, I, can, I guess, team here. Pakistan. Yes. And um, so here's a... Pakistan ne- has not played as of yet. Correct. New Zealand has played one match. They have won the one match. Bangladesh has lost that match to New Zealand, Amanath. So that was our points table. Uh, and here are some of the matches that are happening uh, in the next few days. And we'll get into that, Amanath. I know uh, listeners are also waiting for us to talk about uh, the preview of India and England. But hold on to your horses. Here are the matches that are happening tomorrow. New Zealand will be playing Pakistan at the Pelikeli International Stadium. It'll be morning uh, East Coast time at 6 o'clock. Correct. And, uh, correct. And also tomorrow is the Group A match. The big match. The big match. England versus India will be played at the R. Premadasa Stadium in Colombo. Yes. Sep- September 24th is the Group B match. Ireland versus West Indies. Same venue, Premadasa Stadium. September 25th is the Group D match between Bangladesh and Pakistan. That will be played at the Pelikali International Stadium. September 27th. Now this is where you get a Super 8, Samanath. The, based on the standings. Based on the standings. Some good matches are happening in the next coming days. Next week is going to be a big week. Yes, indeed. Now let's get right into it. Let's get uh, in the first match between New Zealand and Pakistan. Now New Zealand already have defeated Bangladesh. some momentum in de- defeating Bangladesh and going in and playing against Pakistan. Now Pakistan, let's t- talk about them also. They have they are they they came to this arena after pretty good performances against Australia. Yes. Now. Uh, I w- since you mentioned New Zealand, I uh, I wonder how many watched Brendan McCallum score. Yes, a yes. I haven't, I haven't seen that obviously, but I've read about I it. I saw the highlights in, on ESPN. I, brilliant century of 123 in just 58 balls. I tell you, uh, and he's the second. Cent- he scored two centuries. He's the first guy to score two centuries in uh, T20 World yes. Cup, and I think he's got the highest score. So, if if at all. New Zealand, the Kiwis have a chance against Pakistan. It will depend on the bat of Brendan McCallum. If he doesn't have a big uh, score tomorrow, it's going to be Pakistan show all the way. You know, you know for sure, Ajmal is going to play a very, very important role in this match. He's going to play a big, big role in the whole tournament. Correct. Mm. And we also know the weakness of New Zealand in playing spin. True, very true. So, given this one, Amanad, I'm going to go, I'm going I'm I'm going to go ahead and uh, take uh, my pick on Pakistan for this match. Definitely, I think using Pakistan. Let's get into India versus England. Oh my God! I wish I could say uh, with the same level of confidence that India is going to win, but I can't. It, it would be a miracle, especially facing England. You need a good bowling attack, as we all know, India doesn't have that. Now, again, I'm not underestimating anybody here, Amanad. Please. I'm trying to understand, them, but when you face a an all round team like England and Aust- and you know other teams also, and they're in, they're in form. Now, Amanath, you uh, you had a pretty pretty interesting point that you were talking about the subcontinent pitches and and uh, and conditions. Most of these teams have caught up now, caught on to the environment. There are two things: either the subcontinental wickets have become uh, uh, fast bowler friendly, or you can say that the uh, foreign teams have got used to it. Gotten used to it, and I think it's more like it because they are playing IPL. They have got used to the subcontinental wickets. I I I am I'm. I'm Leaning more towards a second statement, which is they have gotten used to playing in the subcontinental conditions. And also their fast bowlers have understood how to use subcontinental conditions uh, smartly. They are varying their pace. In fact, Stein got a few wickets with his slower ball, not with his uh, yorker. He is is, uh, slipping in a slower ball, forcing the batsman early into the shot and giving up a catch. Real quickly for Team India, do you expect any changes? I don't expect any changes in the Indian team. The, uh, the same team which played against Afghanistan is going to be there. They'll, they'll have to execute better, especially the bowling. The bowling, they have to bowl well at the death. And they're, uh, forget bowling at the death, they're killing themselves. 
uh, in, uh, team india has got a major hill to cross tomorrow and uh, even if they lose they are going to go, go through to the yes, next know that, know playoffs that. but it will be better that they don't get humiliated at least let them put up a good show and show that uh, they are capable of scaring any team and uh, i hope they do a better performance than what they did against afghanistan because um, team england man handled uh, afghanistan whereas team india did not and uh, there were some eyebrows eyebrows left uh, uh, raised over uh, the opening partnership also between Sehwag and Gautam Gambhir it was pretty good, pretty interesting article that i read uh, writ- a column written by Akash Chopra mm-hmm. and he had some interesting points about that i actually agreed with him on few uh, few of few of the points that he had and especially I, i know i've been talking about this thing about Gautam Gambhir's technique he has got into a habit of of uh, teasing outside uh, uh, hey, of some delivery he's just pushing outside the off and he's he's i may, maybe somebody needs to sit down with him the coach or the captain and you no, know his uh, technique is faulty it's more, more of a fisherman's technique he has i i think he's is is a much more batsman than that I think he's, he's a got, better batsman than that. He's a better bas- batsman than that. He's got pretty good strokes that he can play. He can, he can, he, he's got the ability to play straight also. And uh, but uh, he's you, got into habit of doing that, Amanath. You got to keep. You got to be behind the line of the ball, and he's not behind the line of the ball. As simple as that. And uh, so, so with Sehwag, Amanath. Sehwag has also been. Uh, a little bit shaky that that puts india into a situation now i know you always have the more, the the, the, uh, the mr dependable that's what he's known as now is virat kohli the new dravid the new dravid and he's been scoring and and you know uh, good luck to him amanath he's been playing superbly in all formats whether it's test one day or t20s True. he's he's uh, as as you mentioned correctly he's the new dravid now very much so he's he's playing superbly then you have down the order you have uv who comes in uh, suresh wena my god what a return of uv yes indeed oh god uh, it is much more than what i expected he has been holding his uh, place by bowling by batting and even fielding and fielding yes indeed sir now amanad before the match started uh, there, there was a warm up match between pakistan and india where india lost after putting up a good score and they couldn't defend i a still have that text message that you sent me is <laughs> thanks to dhoni he cost us the match yes uh, he he uh, we should have won that uh, match uh, that is like in new zealand sorry new zealand yes not in lost by uh, new zealand yes yes see uh, it all comes down to executing whatever plans you have and you cannot leave it for the last ball or last two balls if you get the chance to finish in the 19th over please do so you cannot keep it for the 20th over now you're playing at a big stage in big arena like that amart now that was team india for team england do you expect any changes there Uh, no i i think they are in, uh, clicking pretty good luke right he scored a brilliant 99 yes yes he has okay and uh, i have to give uh, team england the odds on favorite for tomorrow's match i know keys better was uh, taken care of pretty early but he he definitely is a dangerous batsman opener and i think he does wonders for team england see the, the everybody is uh, chipping in at a, at the right moment uh, to give england the advantage So that's that's for team India and team England and also on the 24th is Ireland and West Indies Bangladesh and Pakistan on the 25th. Uh-huh. So there are some interesting matches coming so up. So I hope the... India can surprise England tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a difficult task. So but that's my wish. Your picks for uh, India and England. If I if I uh, keep my Indian partisanship uh, aside, I'll have to go with England. The same here. I'm keeping as as a, as a cricket fan, as a cricket analyst, as a cricket lover, and as a cricket broadcaster, looking at both the teams. Uh, England would be my pick for tomorrow. Because they're match. in better form. As simple as that. I'm looking at the performance not only on the paper but also on the field. Yes. Given that as a fact, uh, we'll go with England on this one. And uh, between uh, New Zealand and Pakistan, I expect Pakistan to win it handily. It w- it's not going to be a close game. Well, friends, you are listening to Full Toss with Amanath and Amit on Radio Dil online, Radio Dil dot com. You can also catch us on uh, Twitter with the tagline Full Toss Cricket. Those of you who uh, follow our blogs regularly. you can log on to fulltosscricket.com once again fulltosscricket.com is our blog we are also on youtube now amanath usually what he does is after the show is completed uh, by sunday morning he will have the show posted on youtube the the entire proceedings of today's uh, show will be available for listening and i like what you do with that thing amanath you index it yes So I think it's a pretty good way of uh, you know viewing it but Amanath let's get right into our domestic cricket now okay and uh, we have we have covered the millennium cricket league in the beginning now I'm going to get into the cricket league of New Jersey also known as CLNJ 
Okay. Now, see, here's a match that I really wanted to discuss first before we get into the other matches also. And this was a match played between the Newark Cricket Club. I always talked about them, Amanath. I yes. have always been saying that they are, they are a pretty good, solid team. They played against the Miro CC, which is a Miro Cricket Club. Yes. And Newark, has, Newark won this match and became the Division 1 champions. They, were, they, uh, uh, they won this match. And here's the scorecard. And Newark... Cricket, cricket club batting first in 40 overs scored for 202 runs Amanath very good score their uh, their opening partner their opening uh, pair gave them a pretty solid start with uh, Munawar uh, 22 uh, then you have Chaudhary who scored 40 26 for Bilal Ahmed 13 for Abdul Rahim 18 for Kamran Khan 19 for Adnan Naseem 21 down the order you have 21 for Farhan Javed who was not out Amanath mm-hmm. And uh, they, they actually helped, uh, uh, these scores helped Newark get to a total of 202 in 40 overs after losing 9 wickets. Now, um, Myro CC also, uh, let, let me just get into the score, uh, the bowling card for Myro CC. 4 wickets for Hitesh Hitech Patel. H- Hitech Patel, I like the name, Hitech. Uh, we talked about him last, mm-hmm. last time also. Hitesh Hitech Patel, 8 overs, 1 maiden, 35 runs and 4 wickets. The very impressive performance. Very, very good performance. Two wickets for uh, Mayur Patel. He gave up 32 runs. Two wickets for uh, Rimal Patel. Gave up 33 runs in seven overs. And also two wickets for Nirav Patel in seven overs. Um, one made in 38 runs. He has given. So uh, they restricted uh, uh, Newark at 202 in 40 overs after, uh, uh, after nine wickets. 203 is what the target set for Miro CC. You would expect their openers to come out guns blazing and exactly what happened. And they did very well. They did really well. Here's a, here, here's a quick look at the scorecard, Amanath. Uh, Jigar Kumar Patel scored 58 of 73 deliveries. Look at nine boundaries. Nine boundaries. He played like a real opener, Amanath. Mm. Also giving him company was Ketan Patel who scored 27 in 62 deliveries with two boundaries and a six. Uh, but the o- opening pair put on 99 runs oh, in... Yes, that's what I was get, getting into eventually. 99 runs in 22 overs. That's a very good start. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's what the doctors prescribed them. Uh, and I think uh, it's, a, uh, it's a tragedy or it is sad that others couldn't keep up the good start. Because K- after yes. that, it, they folded. Kayur Dave was bowled by Irfan Naseem at the score of 6. Nirav Patel was bowled by Adnan Naseem at the score of 2. Uh, Rimal Patel, 13. 2 for Nirav Patel. 11 for Mayur Patel. Uh, Nand Kishore Patel was bowled by uh, uh, Zafar Ali Khan at 11. There were a lot of bowls here, Ramanath. Yeah, clean bowl. Clean, a lo- lot of them. High Tech Patel was run out at the score of 6. True. Hitesh High Tech Patel. I like that name. Ashish Bhatia was not out at the duck in 37.4 overs. Uh, Myro Cricket Club scored, uh, only managed to get 173. Now, here's a quick look at the bowling card for Newark. Look at this. Three wickets for Irfan Naseem in uh, seven overs, 35 runs. Two wickets for Zafar Ali Khan. Uh, he's gave up 39 runs. Two wickets for Adnan Naseem. Um, gave up 23 runs. And a wicket for Asad Munawar. In thir- uh, he gave up 31 runs. So a pretty good performance is by Newark Cricket Club. They became the Division uh, one, uh, division, uh, one champion, champions. Congratulations to them. Congrats to them. Well, that was a pretty good, well-contested match. And uh, Amana, these matches are contested really well. And all of them. Uh, uh, it's very heartening to see the level of commitment by uh, the local cricketers. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes, indeed. We wish them the best, Amanath. Yes. And uh, we really do wish, wish them the best. Now, uh, also NJSBCL, that is the New Jersey Cricket League Associ- uh, uh, softball league. Mm. Their finals will be played on October the sixth. They are much bigger league. <laughs> they are much bigger league, and uh, I'm just trying to get uh, there. If you have their uh, points table, I really okay, want. Okay, I have that. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, since the league is still uh, on, uh, let, let's see how the points standing. Indeed. In, in their group, Division 1, Maha CC leads the table with uh, 155 points. That's my old team. Uh, yeah, Josh CC is there with 155 too. Nijazi Stars Creek Club is at one, third at 150 and the Legends also are at 150. Now coming to uh, uh, group Division 2, Pool AC, uh, they had... Uh, Mm. Adroit uh, CC is at uh, 155 points. GP Rec Cricket Club is at 155 second. Sparsh 11 is at third. And Crickaholics. Crickaholics, yes, I remember Cricaholics that. Crickaholics are at uh, number four. 
Now, how many matches have they played, Amanat? Uh, they, they, they have played about 20 to, uh, 19 to 20 matches. And you mentioned Mahasisi, how many matches have they played? They have played they 20 matches. And how many have they won? They won 15 out of the 20. That's pretty outstanding. Yeah, 75% of the matches they won. And uh, same thing with Adroit. Out of 19, they won 15 matches. Okay. And now coming to the uh, group division 2, Pool BD, you have Wayne Warriors. I like the name. Wayne w- Warriors, yes, indeed. Wayne Warriors. They, they played 21 and they won 18. And they are at 175 points. Mercer Challengers are uh, at 165. 21 matches. Uh, they have 116. Third is October Maze. October okay. Maze. October Maze. It's creative. They're getting creative. Uh, yes. Day by day. And Jersey Stars. So these are the top four teams in uh, Division 2. And... Uh, it's very interesting to see in Division 1 Pool A, you've got teams like Legends and other uh, New Jersey Stars Cricket Club, Piscataway CC and Parzipane. So these are the other four teams. Now, is it the same team, uh, Piscataway Patels? That's, that's what I they're known so. as. I think so. And in uh, uh, Group Division 1 Pool B, you have Tom's River, all the shopkeepers. All the shopkeepers, yes. All the shopkeepers. They are at 50, they are leading the table. 15 matches they have won. Uh, 15 out of, out of the 15, 12 matches they won. We'll have to get them on our show one of these days, Amanda. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I also want to get the Piscata with Patels as well. Now, yes. I know you have mentioned Punjab 11 also. Punjab 11, yes. You have Patels, you have Sardars, you have got shopkeepers, and people, and you have got cricketholics. I think we have a very uh, interesting mix here. Yes, indeed, sir. Well, friends, Amanath, unfortunately, that's all the time we had left for today. Okay. Uh, I, uh, we, we'll cover the rest of the le- yes, indeed. leagues later. <laughs> friends, you were listening to Full Toss with Amit and Amanath on Radio Dil, online, radiodil.com. You can also listen to us on your regular phones, 408-418-5000. Aap sun rahe Radio Dil, Dil se. Dil tak. Go ahead, uh, okay, I, I just wanted to give a, sh- uh, a quick uh, update on the New Jersey State Cricket Umpires uh, Association. Go right ahead. Uh, the top team there in the points table was the Royals, followed by Punjab Green, and and the third team was Fighters, and fourth was Bergen. So they're also they're almost up to the finals level. Level. The playoffs are uh, still going on. And I, I, I'm sure they usually their, their finals are, are played in sometime in the mid to the end of Oct- October. Yeah, they'll have the 2020 series as indeed, well. Indeed. Uh, Deepak Khatri is doing a very good job of running that league as well now Anad before I sign off I also wanted to let our listeners know and you know that uh, we have had a contact with uh, some of the teams from Long Island yes and we'll be having them on the show uh, one of the teams uh, is the Pakistan Warriors yes they, uh, we saw them last year in fact we did the commentary for their match Amanat, yes, at, last year. at the Randall's Island uh, in Manhattan Bro. so uh, I've talked to Ahmad Dar, uh, their coach and they're pretty excited to be on the uh, show. So we'll definitely in future we'll we'll also cover some of the teams from Long Island as well. And after the playoffs are over, our whole idea is to get the teams to come and talk about what their aims and objectives are, and uh, give them a a, vo- a voice and a platform to promote the game of uh, of cricket here. Amanada, at this point, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our listeners and our supporters for giving giving us an outstanding support. Not only on our show, but also on our YouTube channel. Yes, uh, it, it has been remarkable. We have had more than 4,500 hits on our YouTube channel. And that was something remarkable. Uh, remarkable. I never expected that kind of a response. Thank you very much for all those who went and clicked on our show and heard the events. By the way, I, we have set it up in such a way you can... Uh, pick and choose the tracks that you wish to hear on the channel. You can, uh, you don't have to you index it. Yeah, I've indexed it appropriately. Yes, indeed, sir. So thank you very much from the full toss crew here, both Amit, Amit Amanath, and we, we definitely do appreciate that. Uh, keep supporting us. You're all you're also supporting your uh, local domestic uh, teams, and as I always say that on air, it is our commitment. Mm in promoting domestic cricket as much as possible. True. And with your help, I'm sure we can, get, we can achieve this goal together. So thank you very much. Above all, Amanat, I want to thank you for your contributions, your expertise, your knowledge you bring to this table. It makes it absolutely much more interesting. Uh, I enjoyed doing the show with you. It's a, it's a privilege to talk about cricket and uh, it's, it's always fun. Let me put it that way. Well, friends, we'll be back here next Saturday afternoon, same time, 2 to 3. Till then, everybody, have a fantastic Weekend.